Good morning and welcome once again to another Moment in the Word. We're continuing in our meditations on the Incarnation, insights into the Incarnation, how Messiah has put on flesh. God became man. We're looking at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, and verses 26 to 29. It reads like this. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, and the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women." And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered in her mind what manner of greeting this should be. It begins by saying, and in the sixth month. Sixth month of what? What is it referring to? The sixth month of the year? No. If we look at the prior verse, it's talking about Elizabeth. And Elizabeth says, The Lord has dealt with me in the days which he looked upon me and has taken away my reproach. Elizabeth, now great in years, is also great with child. It is also six months after Zacharias, her husband, who was serving as a priest in the temple, was silenced because he didn't believe the Lord that his wife would have a child in their old age. This child would be John the Baptist. John the Baptist, we now know, is six months older than the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is in the sixth month that the angel, the word angel in Greek is the word angelos. That's how we get the word angel. But it's also meaning the same thing in Hebrew. Both of those words simply mean a messenger from God. The angel's name is Gabriel. Gabriel, his name means God is my strength. And he has come, he is the same one who announced to Zacharias that his wife would have a child, and now he comes to Mary and announces that Mary will have a child. And so he comes and he is sent from God unto the city in Galilee named Nazareth. Now, Galilee literally means the circle of the Gentiles. It was commonly called the Galilee of the nations. It was where it was a despised region because there were so many Gentiles. And yet that is where our Lord had his predominance of ministry. And we find that it is there that we have a town. The town's name is Nazareth. Now, Nazareth is so small, it's not even mentioned in the Old Testament. It is so small, Josephus doesn't mention it. It's not mentioned in the Talmud. It is not mentioned because it is so insignificant. Many, Josephus, suggest that the town at that time was probably about 2,000 people and inhabitants. It was very, very small. And not only was it insignificant, it was also despised. Some think it was the location where a Roman army was headquartered. And so there were soldiers that were there that would also make it a despised region. Some have argued that nothing good came out of it. Not one prophet has come from this region. But that's not true. Jonah comes from this region. Elijah comes from this region. And Elisha comes from this region. What is significant is all three of those prophets all minister to the Gentiles. And it is Jesus who came into the world. He is Jewish. He came to his own. His own received him not. He came to whosoever among all of the races and nations and peoples of the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now we have the message coming to, from Gabriel, to Mary. And notice it says the description of Mary, she is a virgin. 
The word for virgin is Parthenos. We get our English word Parthenon from it. It was that building that looked to be perfect. Even symmetrically, it looked perfect because the way the architect had built it was so that it was the lines, the perspective, would look like it was straight, even though there was distance. It was an amazement, but that word means not having known a man. Usually it could be translated even young woman. However, because Luke has mentioned it twice, we know that in the same verse that he's emphasizing this. Remember, Luke is a doctor. Remember, Luke is the one that is going to go into great detail about the virgin birth. We know also that she is, according to this verse, espoused to Joseph. Espoused, we would think of it as an engagement. But in the Hebrew wedding, there was two stages. There was first the period of betrothal. Betrothal was when there was a binding agreement Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 23 says that if a man lie with a espoused or betrothed woman, that they were both to be killed. It was a capital punishment because she was to be married. And she was considered marriage, married, and the only way to break the marriage was by a get or a divorcement. So consequently, she had to be a virgin. Now we look at that and say that's important because Jesus is not born of a man, not of Joseph, not of a Roman soldier, not of anyone else. He is, she is conceived by the Holy Spirit and thereby Jesus is born. And so we find that this virgin is espoused to Joseph, his name means increaser, interestingly, of the house of David. So that we find now, both from Mary and from Joseph, both of them have lineage going back to David. In Matthew's gospel, we have Joseph's genealogy, the legal line by which Jesus can trace his kingship back to David, which was a promise given to David that his throne would be an eternal one. Then we also see in the Gospel of Luke that we have that Jesus, his humanity, goes back to Adam, and that is through Mary that we have the genealogy of our Lord. So in both cases, he is a descendant of David. Now the angel comes to her and says to her, I am really, as I think about this, just absolutely amazed. When Gabriel met with Zacharias, it was in the temple, while he's praying at the altar of incense. In this case, Mary's in her house. Can you imagine? She probably is about 12, 13, 14 years of age, and while she is doing whatever, maybe cleaning clothes, who knows, maybe making a meal, and then this angel appears. And this angel speaks to her and says, Hail, thou who art highly favored. The word hail is the word charos in the Greek. It is the word from which we get our English word charismatic or charisma. It is the word for gift or grace. Grace is something that is given to us by God that we do not deserve. And then highly favored means to be endowed with grace. In the Hebrew, or Greek rather, if you were to hear it, it sounds like it's a melody. It is grace and then grace that is given. And so we say, we find that uh, the angel says to her that you are favored. Why? Because the Lord is with you. This is the phrase Emmanuel. God is with you. Now, I want to say that that same phrase is reflective back 
to Ephesians, where it's only used one more time, highly favored, is used in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6, that you have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Blessed with all spiritual blessings, it's the same Greek word. And what is that spiritual blessing? For you, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you from the moment you receive Jesus as your Savior. Mary is now, she has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. That's what blesses us. Mary is called great, blessed art thou, among women. She is not above women. She is among women blessed. Remember that the promise was given to Satan back in Genesis 3 that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent, of Satan. Jesus came into the world to destroy the works of the devil. And here we find it that Jesus came by Mary, conceived by the Holy Spirit, into the world, and she is blessed among women. They have all been waiting. We are waiting. When Jesus came, now we no longer need to wait that he has come into our lives. And so we find then that the angel said unto, excuse me, verse 29, and when she saw him, she was troubled. What was troubling to her? Was it the angel? No, it wasn't. The word for troubled there means to be in great angst, to be in pain even. And the word is at his saying. That's what troubled her. It was not the messenger that disturbed her. It was the message. And what was it? That there was something that was going to happen through her, and she didn't feel worthy, for sure. She was humbled. And I wonder, as you look at what God is doing in your life, are you humbled? Are you aware of the fact God has put his Holy Spirit in you to accomplish a great work that not only would you be blessed, but others would be blessed through you? That's what it means. And then it says that she went on and considered these things in her mind. The word considered means to toss back and forth. I encourage you today to toss back and forth. The fact that God has chosen you in Christ to be blessed with all spiritual blessings, not just that you would feel good, but that you would be a blessing to others. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the work you began in us, the work you promised to finish. We pray if there is any that do not know you as Lord and Savior, that today they might receive you. And that truly, Father, we as Christians might be quick to share the gospel with those who do not know you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.